More than a decade ago, scientists identified and described a novel disease known as nobilitis, in which some Nobel laureates may consider that their award is a certificate of competence in any field, prompting them to undertake projects or accept positions which are beyond their capabilities. The case studies are as numerous as they are devastating. Linus Pauling thought that vitamin C could cure schizophrenia. James Watson thinks white people are genetically superior to other races. And of course, the winner of the 1973 Nobel Prize in Physics, Brian Josephson, thinks homeopathy is real. Remember homeopathy? <laughs> yeah, me too. At this point, the question isn't whether or not Nobelitis is a real problem, but whether or not we should change the name in order to be more inclusive of scientists who have achieved a high level of fame and then go on to exhibit symptoms of the disease despite having never won a Nobel. On that note, today I'd like to talk about Avi Loeb, the director of the Institute for Theory and Computation at the Center for Astrophysics at Harvard University, and noted crank who keeps appearing on my social media timeline like he's an ad for Cheech and Chong's new CBD gummies. So yes, Loeb is a very accomplished theoretical physicist who has authored many respected papers on topics like black holes and exoplanets. He's been at Harvard since 1993, and as these things often go in academia, that usually means he's going to be there until he dies. Unless, you know, somebody catches him fully making up fraudulent data, that is, I guess, maybe. That hasn't happened yet, but in the past few years, he has seemingly lost interest in his field of expertise and gone all in on aliens which is why Harvard University, the elite Ivy League school that's produced eight U.S. presidents, 49 Nobel laureates, and 369 Rhodes Scholars, is putting out press releases claiming that one of their eminent theoretical physicists is chartering a boat to the middle of the Pacific Ocean, where he possibly illegally and unethically collected the remnants of an extrasolar meteor that crashed there nearly a decade ago, because he thought that it could be artificial in origin or hold equipment from alien civilizations. Not only did Loeb claim that he would be able to pinpoint the exact location of this meteor on the deep sea floor, but he claimed that the metallic spheroids he collected, according to a preprint he submitted this month, originated from a highly differentiated magma ocean of a planet with an iron core outside the solar system or from more exotic sources. On the other hand, an independent analysis done last month found that those spheroids are most likely coal ash. Literally just beryllium, lanthanum, and uranium spit into the ocean thanks to boring, old, disgusting human industrial contamination. If you're interested in a very thorough debunking of Loeb's alien spheroids romp, check out this Big Think article that systematically dismantles every part of his argument. But here's a quick rundown. Uh, there is no solid evidence that the initial meteor was extrasolar in origin. There's a very good chance the high velocity of the meteor caused it to mostly or entirely burn up in our atmosphere, there's little chance that even if some of it hit the ocean and fell all the way down to the sea floor, that Loeb would have successfully found the remnants within a 100 kilometer range of uncertainty. And the molecular composition of the spheroids all point to an origin within our solar system. Also, the piece ends with some choice comments from other experts. From astrophysicist Francois Rincon, I feel so sorry for all the real Harvard astronomers. <laughs> From astrobiologist Caleb Scharf, well, they did indeed discover evidence of a technological civilization right here on Earth. And from astronomer James Beatty, lol. <laughs> so cold. <laughs> This is hardly the first time Loeb has pranced off to do something that has the experts in that field slapping their foreheads. He has written extensively about his obsession, Oumuamua, the first confirmed interstellar object we've observed passing through our solar system. It was first identified in 2017, but unfortunately it was already on its way out of town. So scientists had very little time to collect as much data as possible. What scientists were able to learn is still pretty impressive, 
of, but there was this unavoidable vacuum of information that made it tempting to wonder if this mysterious object from outside our solar system was really a rendezvous with Rama kind of situation, an alien craft speeding past us or just a piece of alien technology hurtling through space for millions or billions of years. Even the astronomers studying this object had that initial giddy thought because scientists are humans and the idea of there being an alien civilization out there is cool as hell. And so researchers like Jason Wright, director of the Penn State Extraterrestrial Intelligence Center, have spent a lot of time going over the evidence for and against a natural origin for Oumuamua, and with some measure of disappointment, they have found that it is overwhelmingly in favor of not aliens. And yet, Avi Loeb published many papers arguing the opposite, forcing the experts in the field to repeatedly counter his points. As always, links to everything I talk about are in the transcript, linked below in the description, so feel free to click through if you would like to read the full explanation. But just to keep things brief once again, Oumuamua's shape, albedo, which is the amount of light it reflects, its acceleration, its speed, its trajectory, they're all easily explained as a natural object uh, matching those that astronomers have been observing for decades, despite what Loeb claims. These points have been repeatedly explained to Loeb, but they didn't stop him from publishing an entire book on his hypothesis, which became a New York Times bestseller because, of course, it did. Loeb has gone on to launch his own project to set up Earth-based monitoring systems to watch our skies for alien civilizations who might want to visit us. And while actual respected scientists point out pesky details like, we're already monitoring the skies for strange phenomena to study, and your dismissal of scientific evidence makes people think that the scientists studying extraterrestrial intelligence are all quacks, Loeb has gotten increasingly defensive. For instance, here he is on a Zoom call responding to Jill Tarter making these exact points. Tarter, in case you're not aware, is an astronomer who is so connected with the search for extraterrestrial life in the universe that the main character in Contact is based off of her. So, you know, keep that in mind and maybe imagine what kind of respect you would have in your voice when addressing her. So, Avi, I get a little bit pissed off when you throw the entire scientific culture under the bus, because some of us have been thinking about and building instruments to find anomalies for a very long time. And I think that um, when we say that if we ever are going to announce such a detection, that we require extraordinary evidence, we're doing that as a way of differentiating ourselves from the pseudoscience that is so much a part of popular culture with UFOs and and all kinds of claims of things that people have detected. So um, I I wouldn't be so hard on the whole culture, Abby. Well, let me explain. To your first point, I'm talking about a factor of, of a thousand in funding. I'm not talking about a factor of two over a decade increase in funding. I'm saying there is a discrepancy by a factor of a thousand in what's, what needs to be the case relative to what is the case of the community that you are talking about. A factor of a thousand is a big factor in funding. And moreover, it's even a bigger factor in bullying because anyone that makes a suggestion in the direction of technological signature is being bullied and ridiculed. I don't think Wait a second, let let me finish. Now, my second point is, uh, my second point, which is very important is, in the dark ages, people used to say that the human body should not be dissected. There shouldn't be operations because it has magical powers, because there is a soul. Now think about it. If scientists were to say, we don't want to discuss the human body until there are extraordinary evidence for something. We don't want to discuss it because of all this nonsense being said about the human body. Where would modern medicine be? I say it's a, science has an obligation to focus on problems that are of interest to the public and use the scientific method to resolve them. And rather than say, We need extraordinary evidence and then step on the grass and not allow it to grow, which is currently the case. 
We need extraordinary evidence, but anyone that mentions this possibility is ridiculed by some uh, blogger that doesn't even write a single paper in a decade. That makes no sense whatsoever. This blogger should first practice science. Well, some of us do. No, no, let me finish. How how do do people make statements about scientists that explore these possibilities within the scientific method? That's the acidic culture that I'm talking about. There is an acidic culture that suppresses innovation in the current culture of science. And the best example is SETI because they say we need extraordinary evidence and then they don't let people search for that extraordinary evidence by a factor of a thousand. I'm not talking about a small group of people at Berkeley or at the SETI Institute doing some work that I'm talking about a factor of a thousand increase in your budget, in the budget of the community and a factor of a hundred more people working on it, not at the SETI Institute, but everywhere in every university, this becoming a mainstream subject just like string theory is, why should we fund searches for dark matter and not for technological civilizations as part of the mainstream? That's my argument. And I find it really surprising that I get opposition from you to that notion. Well, I don't, I, I really don't like the generalization of the whole culture being um, bad mouth. Okay. And you know, sure, I'd love, our, I'd love our budget to be a thousand times. Um, okay, so why are you opposing me? Why don't you join me in arguing for a thousand times more budget? But Avi, I've been doing that for 40 years, all right? We've been arguing. Well, you are arguing with me about the credit of who gets credit for arguing that rather than saying, I endorse your view. Why don't you say I endorse your view instead of saying, oh, I've been doing it. Why are you doing it now? No, Why do you I, say that? Why don't you join forces with me and go for it rather than say, actually, I said it 40 years ago. You are saying it now. I want credit for that. You don't get credit. Who ca-? Like we are trying to promote a common cause. I and mean, you're arguing I think, with me about credit. I, I just don't understand it. I think the culture as a whole shouldn't be bad mouth. That's what I'm saying. I think that you're being too sweeping in your condemnation. Okay, factor of a thousand is too sweeping. Okay, fine. After seeing that logical and reasoned response to valid criticism, you might not be surprised to learn that Loeb retreated into the open arms of the very unscientific UFO fan community, like ancient alien star Nick Pope and self-proclaimed UFO whistleblower Luis Elizondo. And that's why for the past few months, I've been randomly seeing more and more headlines and social media posts about how a noted Harvard astrophysicist is endorsing seen weirder and weirder things. All of which brings me to this very week, just before I recorded this video, when I saw this post from PZ Myers about how Loeb is now attacking the field of geology. He's turned his attention to the Permian-Triassic extinction, aka the Great Dying, Earth's largest known extinction event that occurred 251.9 million years ago to the day, if you can believe it, and which, due to it being so far in the past, is still a bit of a mystery. That said, geologists have formed a consensus that it likely occurred thanks to volcanic eruptions. But in a recent Medium post, Loeb dismisses that consensus as popular opinion and instead posits that the Great Dying was actually due to global warming caused by an ancient technologically advanced civilization that also left behind UFOs as functional relics that still zip around despite the destruction of said civilization. I say this with all sincerity. Is Avi Loeb okay? Like, It's perfectly cool for someone who excels in one field to take an interest in another field. It's less cool for them to ignore the experts in that field. And it's very uncool to grab headlines that end up tarnishing the reputation of the experts in that field. Uh, But when that person starts spinning off into whole new fields and throwing out ideas that sound like they were rejected by the writers of season five of Sliders, it might be time for that person's friends, family, colleagues to get together and start having some serious conversations. Just throwing that out there. It's Sad to see a case of nobilitis proceed so quickly to stage four, where it seems that there's not much chance of stopping it. But just know that this disease is not inevitable, and many esteemed scientists buck the trend. 
I'm reminded of noted astrophysicist Katie Mack, who was staying at my house once when I used that as an opportunity to get her to fix my telescope. I had taken it apart, couldn't get it back together properly. And when I asked Katie if she could fix it, she stared at me for a moment and said, but Rebecca, I'm a theorist. Bless the scientist who knows her area of expertise. And you know what the real kicker is? She actually fixed the telescope anyway. And also, she didn't shout over me to say that I'm a blogger who's never written any scientific papers. That's why Katie Mack is always allowed to stay at my house, and Avi Loeb is not. Hey, everybody. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like. If you loved the video, please subscribe. And if you think the world could use more videos like this and you happen to have a few bucks laying around, head to patreon.com slash Rebecca and join an awesome community of nerds like the people whose names you see on the screen right now. Thanks.